Hey there, I'm Ray Flowers of FantasyGuru.com. Welcome to this recorded version of our show. It's July 5th. I'm actually taking the day off today. Uh, so I'm recording this a little bit early. It's a review of my 2024 FSGA Champions League Fantasy Football Squad. It was covered on SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. Myself and Justin Fenster and actually hosted the draft. So I hosted and drafted at the same time, wanted to give a breakdown for those of you that didn't have Sirius XM, didn't hear the broadcast, give a breakdown of the football action early here in draft season for 2024. I will admit this is the first time we're doing a show, breaking my rule. There's no baseball talk on this show, but again, you were able to see the July 4th recording where we did the all-time baseball team. This is the July 5th recording, Talking Fantasy Football. Uh, for all of you that aren't aware, you see it in the background here, and now you'll see it directly in front of me. Uh, we have got the draft guide available right now at fantasyguru.com and it's rocking and rolling. And uh, we debuted, the, debuted this thing before a lot of other people did. Uh, I think that no matter when the other folks are releasing their product, I'm really a big fan of what we're doing. Here on Wednesdays, you see Armando Marsal. Thursdays, you see Tyler Beaker. Fridays, you see Russell Clay. Uh, you know the quality of work they have. Jeff Manns, Ted Schuster, myself, the entire crew, everyone putting together. Mike Horn, everyone putting together great work over at fantasyguru.com. We've got rookie player profiles. We've got dynasty rankings. We've got PPR rankings, non-PPR rankings, IDP rankings. We've got coaching offensive line scheme breakdowns, which is very unique to what we do. A lot of other sites don't do that. We've got a mock draft and draft simulator. We've got custom league scoring sheets. We've got the auction draft books, which marry the players with the price points that you need if you're doing an auction. IDP rankings, uh, cheat sheets and sleepers for IDP. We've got information about two QB leagues and, and, and super flex leagues and 24-7 chat room where you can get into all and get involved and answer, ask all your questions to get those answers. Excuse me. The weekly live stream on third on went Tuesdays with all the guys at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a ton of other stuff that I haven't even touched the surface with. We have a best ball group in the draft guide, a whole series of articles talking about best ball. We have a whole series of articles talking about the Dynasty League setup. A lot of stuff over there at fantasyguru.com. It's a preseason slash full season product. It's called the draft guide, but it's the entire year. You get it all the way through the end of the regular season. You get coverage up the wazoo. You get all the in-season rankings. You get all the updates there all, the, all week long as we're helping you set your fantasy lineups and all that. Get in now. Subscribe tab in the top right corner. Click on that. Uh, the early bird pricing is already out. I think as we were recording this, because I'm recording this a little early. When I recorded this, it was still active. I don't know when it's actually going to get cut off. So by the time you get over there... Get over there as soon as you can before the price goes up a little bit. The early bird pricing is still in effect. No promo code necessary. Just sign up over at fantasyguru.com. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through my team here. And I know the graphics are going to be a little bit difficult. It's the nature of the beast here. I'll do my best to kind of talk through it and show some things on the screen that will hopefully uh, be a help to you. Let's deal with what we're dealing with here. Uh, this is the FSGA Champions League draft. There, is a there are a series of leagues the FSGA does. Uh, for fantasy sports at every conference, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to, you know, continually be in the top group. I think last year I, I finished fourth in the regular season, lost in the playoffs. That could be wrong. I probably should have checked that before I said it, but I wasn't relegated, so I wasn't one of the bottom four teams. Uh, but it's a 14-team PPR league, and as you can see there on the screen, for and for those of you who can't see it on the screen, it's a one QB league, two running backs, three wide receivers, tight end, flex. Kicker, defense, six bench spots. So this is a very traditional, very standard setup that fantasy uh, football uses. In fact, this is the standard setup that I've used for decades, literally decades now. So quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end, flex, kicker, defense. Boom, done. Uh, six bench spots as well. And as you can see there on the screen, all the people that were included, uh, fast draft, full time, CBS digital, real time, game night. Player props, U.S. Integrity, U.S. Sports, Drafters, Prize Picks, Sirius XM, Ray Flowers, uh, ESPN, Colton the Wolfman, and Fantasy Alarm Sports. So I had the 11th pick in this 14-team PPR draft. Okay, so that's the basics. Nothing, you know, six points for rushing touchdowns, four points for passing touchdowns, 10 points per yards, standard. When you look at the book of what's the standard setup for fantasy football, or the traditional, I shouldn't use the word standard, because that's... That means something different. The traditional setup for fantasy football, this league is that. And yes, that means for those of you that don't do it, three wide receivers is standard, not two. Three wide receivers is standard, and it's been that way for decades. So that's the situation. 14-team PPR, I was picking out of the 11-hole. Uh, 
you need, and we talk about this a lot, you need to have a plan in place when you're doing a draft. And, you know, it is a little difficult when you're hosting and drafting. So there, that's a challenge on its own. Luckily, it's a little easier to draft the team in fantasy football than it is in fantasy baseball because you have less positions you're worried about. You're not really trying to fill categories, right? So it's a little bit easier, but it's still challenging. It's fun. Uh, and for some reason, they think I do a good job at it. So I'm oftentimes doing that. Um, and so, you know, while I go in with a plan because I'm interviewing people, because I'm following the draft, because I'm commenting on picks and all these kind of things, my draft has to be very flexible, my plan. Because I, I, you know, am I going to have time to scour boards and all that? No, I got to have my rankings and I got to go, right? So we had a 60 second clock, totally fine. I made most of my picks in, you know, 30 seconds. Um, but have a plan, but have a pivot off the plan. And here's why, and we'll see this in a second. I have the 11th pick, and according to ADP at the 11th pick, I had a pretty good chance of getting Jonathan Taylor as a running back. And I was going to take Jonathan Taylor in the first round, and then I was going to go wide receiver. My thought being that if I can get one of these full service running backs that touch the ball 250 plus times, there's not a lot of guys like that here. Uh, this is a 14 team league. That makes it even more difficult. A lot of you probably play in 10 or 12 team leagues. So that makes it even more difficult to get that top guy. I'll take Jonathan Taylor because I know I'm not going to get McCaffrey, Hall, or Robinson. Those guys are going to go before me. I'll take Taylor and then I'll pound the receivers. This league went. This league drafted like it was 2006. It was really interesting, and we commented on it on the broadcast. We had McCaffrey go first, Brees Hall go second, CeeDee Lamb, B. John Robinson. So three of the top four running backs, which does happen on occasion, but that's pretty aggressive. Then we had Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and I'll show the board in a bit here. I just, I'm trying to build the suspense. Uh, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson. So Justin Jefferson goes off the board ninth. Oof. USA Today team, um, or they went eighth. Uh, they got a pretty good deal there, I think. Uh, then we had, so I'm sitting there and all these guys are running backs. The wide receivers are coming off the board. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, it's going to work. I'm going to get Jonathan Taylor. Then with pick nine, Saquon Barkley goes. And I'm like, uh-oh. And then with pick 10 right before me, obviously, Jonathan Taylor goes, right? <laughs> so then we have five running backs for, taken in the first 10 picks which is not at all what ADP suggests. And again, this is another reminder that ADP is great, but in this instance, it was wrong. It's not the way the room worked. Um, and as we'll continue to talk about here, this room went very much against ADP and very much drafted like this room often does, waiting on quarterbacks, running backs early. So now I'm up in the 11th pick. And again, I don't have... As this is unfolding, I'm discussing, oh my gosh, this is weird. Look at all these running backs that are coming off the board. So I'm discussing it and my idea, and I'm like I said, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm not getting Jonathan Taylor. The fact he goes right before me is, is frustrating. Would I have taken Saquon Barkley there? I wouldn't have. I would have taken Taylor if Barkley had been, been there. I would not have taken Barkley. So who do I grab? Well, I grab a guy who I believe is a rock solid, now that he's been paid, a wide receiver number one. He happens to be a teammate of Saquon Barkley, and that's A.J. Brown. I love A.J. Brown at that point. Totally comfortable with that. Totally fine with that. Feel great about that. If you had told me before the draft, Ray, it's Jonathan Taylor or A.J. Brown, I would have been fine. So I was hoping for Taylor, but I took A.J. Brown. So then it comes back around to me, and we get Garrett Wilson, Puka Nakua, Jameer Gibbs, Drake London, Travis Etienne, Devontae Adams. As this is coming together, and I'm thinking to myself, and this is interesting, right? Because this happens, I'm sure, to all of you. So I wanted Taylor. He went one pick before me. I wanted Devonta Adams. He went one pick before me. So my first two picks went right next to me, which can be frustrating. Luckily, I didn't have much time to think about that because, you know, I was drafting and hosting. So what do I do here? Do I go Josh Jacobs? And for a second, I thought to myself, do I go Josh Jacobs? And then I said, you know, no. And I had the little birdie in the back of my head being Jeff Manns. The little birdie that said to me, don't take the next guy just because, take the best guy. In the old days, decade ago plus, before Jeff and I really started to work, work together closely, I would have just taken Josh Jacobs. Just done with it, right? Because that, that would have been a safe start. It's a wide receiver. It's a running back. I'm good to go. It's the guy that should have a big workload, okay? But I don't think he was the best player on the board. So what do I do? I took the best player on the board. I took DK Metcalf. So now I've got AJ Brown and DK Metcalf, which in my mind is a spectacular duo. 
Now there's Justin Jefferson and Chris Olave, which is really good. There's Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams, which is really good. But I have one of the top three, maybe top two, maybe top one, but one of the top three duos of wide receivers in this entire league. So the draft plays out. We get more running backs, more running backs, more running backs. Sam Laporta goes in the second round. And I'm thinking to myself, if Travis Kelsey falls to me, and he does fall sometimes, right? And again, this is a 14-team league. So if Travis Kelsey falls to me, I'm going to take him in the third round. He didn't. He went with the fifth pick in the, uh, the the third round. So he didn't make it back to me. So we got all these. He, so at this point in time, we've got no quarterbacks taken. We've got two tight ends taken and a mixture of running backs and wide receivers. And, you know, we're, we're let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 running backs off the board, if I'm counting correctly, heading into my third pick. That's a lot of running backs. Now, again, 16 running backs are off the board. It's a 14-team league. The inclination is to get a running back because, no, right? We're at least 15 deep if I counted wrong. And it's a 14-team league. Like, the bangers are, if they're not already gone, they're getting close. And so in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, okay, do I go Joe Mixon, which would be the safe pick because that would be two wide receivers and a running back. Do I go Joe Mixon or not? What did I do? See it there on the screen. I didn't go Joe Mixon. I went Mike Evans. Yeah, I went Mike Evans. So now I've got A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Mike Evans. In a 14-team league, according to our rankings at fantasyguru.com right now, or at the time of the draft, I have three top 14 wide receivers. I have three wide receiver ones in this setup. I now, whether I had the best duo or not, with Brown and Metcalf, I undoubtedly, without question, book it, Dano, have the best three receivers in this league, period. Brown, Metcalf, and Evans. So, And Evans scores 10 touchdowns every year. I would expect some positive regression for Metcalf to get 10 touchdowns. We know Brown is an absolute monster. This is the best trio of wide receivers in this league, period. Now, again, Joe Mixon goes next. He went the pick right after me. Let's we'll see if I can get that on the screen there. It's really hard to see here. Uh, but there it is for those of you that are watching. And remember, you can always watch on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adelite Plus Network. Uh, you can also watch on Facebook at facebook.com slash Fantasy Guru HQ. So I take Brown, I take Metcalf, I take Evans. This is not normal for me. Okay. And as you can see there on the screen, if you're reading ahead, folks, you see what I did next. Did I go running back in the fourth round? I didn't. Why? Ray, what are you doing? Because at that point of the draft, what had started to happen, and this is what I was thinking in my head, what is, everyone's gone running backs here, right? Team one, Bill Muzio went double running backs. Team 10, prize picks went double running backs. Like everyone is really aggressively getting these running backs. I'm thinking to myself, we're getting wide receiver run. I've got the three best wide receiver in terms of a combination. Do I take James Conner or DeAndre Swift? Eh. Are James Conner and DeAndre Swift appreciably different than the guys they ended up rostering? And the answer for me, maybe not for you, but for me, the answer to me is no, they're not. So I pushed all in. And I took Josh Allen in the, in the fourth round. Josh Allen was the first quarterback, so I had my pick. I took Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts with the next pick, and then a couple of picks later, Patrick Mahomes went. Took Josh Allen. So now I'm four rounds in. I've got the best three receivers in football. Whether you agree that Allen is number one, I think he's top three for everyone, top two for most, I think. I think he was number one. I grabbed him. So now I'm going to say I have the best quarterback here, and I've got the three best receivers. My first four rounds, I'm killing it. I'm absolutely killing it. What does the room do? The room did what I expected. We had quarterbacks again two quarterbacks went that round before my next pick two more quarterbacks came off the board we saw a tight end come off the board and Dalton Kincaid we saw a ton of wide receivers you know you can see you can't see there because I don't have it on the screen um well you can see here if I switch over real quickly uh you know there it is you see Smith Higgins Pickens Kirk Neighbors Reed Allen Dell McLaurin like here here they all come right so this is not my normal build. This is not my preferred build. I had a couple of people say, Ray, zero running back. Yes. Number one, 
Absolutely, without question, no. Zero running back does not work. Could it work? Sure. It doesn't work. What zero running back is as well is not what I did, and I'll explain that in a second. At least in my mind, and again, this is part of the problem with zero running back theory, is the way it's defined by people. Like I've seen people say, well, I took Josh Jacobs and I did the zero running back theory. No. (laughs) You don't take a running back in the second round and do zero running back theory. Zero running back theory means you don't draft running backs. And I wouldn't consider going four rounds without a running back to be the zero running back theory. I do not believe in that. You need to have guys at the running back position you can trust. And you need to have guys at the running back position you can turn to. Well, Ray, you don't have a top 20 guy. I don't. But here's what I did. In the fifth round, I grabbed Zach Moss, the number one back with the Bengals. In the sixth round, I grabbed Najee Harris, the number one back for the Steelers. In the seventh round, I grabbed Jerome Ford, the number one back for the Browns. In the eighth round, I grabbed Kimani Vidal, the youngster of the Chargers, who isn't going to open the year as number one. They have Gus Edwards, but Gus Edwards is an aging player. Gus Edwards is not a third down back. Who knows what J.K. Dobbins coming off injury 76 of his career has to offer. Kamani Vidal, even though I don't anticipate him at the start of the season being a guy, a couple weeks into the season, halfway through the season, he very easily could be the number one running back in an offense with Greg Roman, with uh, the new head coach, who I'm Jim Harbaugh. That could be a banging pick. So I've got Moss and Harris, who I believe are top 25 running backs. Again, remember, this is a 14-team league. If I've got two top 25 running backs, in theory, I should be okay because as long as I have two of the top 28, I'm keeping pace. And remember, if I keep pace at running back with the best quarterback in in the league and with the three best receivers in the league, if I keep pace at running back, I'm way ahead. The Jerome Ford thing is very interesting because Jerome Ford, not sexy, not exciting. Top 20, was he running back 21 last year or something like that in a PPR setup? 22? He was top 25 running back last year. There's no clarity at all. I know that Nick Chubb was drafted here and, you know, maybe Nick Chubb comes through. And Nick Chubb actually went in the seventh round to Howard Bender, which I thought was way aggressive. Uh, I will give Howard credit. He also took Dante Foreman later. So he grabbed, he took two backs from Cleveland. I was hoping to grab Nick Chubb myself, but seventh round's way too early for me. I don't know. I mean, there's a chance Nick Chubb never plays an NFL down again. Uh, I don't think there's much of a possibility. We saw his leg go sideways, right? I think it's very unlikely he's good to go in week one. Um, I don't know, again, what he's going to look like. I don't know where he's at physically. I don't know if he's going to be on the pup list. I don't know. You know, I just have no idea. None of us know how this is going to go. Bottom line is Jerome Ford's going to have a role. Whether it's the support role or the lead role, he's going to have a role. And as my third running back in a PPR setup, In a 14-team league, I'm very comfortable with that. And again, our rankings reflect that over at FantasyGuru.com. So again, I don't think this is your running back because in my mind, both Moss and Harris are top 25 running backs. Ford's top 30 and Vidal's top 40. So I've got four guys in the top 40 in a 14-team league, which if you go four, 14, it's 56. So I'm well ahead of the curve, right, at that spot. So that's what I'm thinking. So let's go back to my team so it's a little bit more clear for those of you watching. And you can see the link there. It's rtsports.com slash FSG dash champions. Should have said that earlier. I apologize. If you want to follow this board, it's free to public. Everyone can see it. You can always listen to the full broadcast. It's the FSGA Champions League. Full broadcast is stored uh, in the folder for, you know, events over at Fantasy, over at uh, SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. So you can listen to that. Just type in FSGA Champions League. Or you can go to rtsports.com slash FSGA dash champions, rtsports.com slash FSGA dash champions. So Brown, Metcalf, Evans, Allen, killing it. Moss and Harris, I'm just trying to keep pace at running back because, again, I'm killing it at wide receiver and running at quarterback. So I go four straight running backs. Then I go back in the ninth round to get Khalil Shakir. Do I think it's necessary to get quarterback receiver from the same team? No. Do I think you should do it? You can do it. I don't think you should or have to. If you can, okay. And I think at this price point in the ninth round, that's totally fine, right? I think that's, you know, your your risk is elevated because if I, let's say I take, if I took Shakir just as argument's sake in the fifth round, if Allen goes down, Shakir loses, right? And that, so that in the ninth round where I'm baking in just a solid effort as my wide receiver four, Totally fine with that. Uh, number one, I get the benefit when they hook up. Number two, I'm not, you know, 
I don't even necessarily have to plan on starting Shakir if everyone else is healthy. I don't know if that's fair because <laughs> guys always get hurt. But I, I'm not even currently really planning on starting Shakir, so he's a depth guy. So this is fine. I also think that in the case of Shakir, uh, he's kind of our bet over at FantasyGuru.com to lead this team in catches. You know, Keon Coleman's there, and and you know maybe Dalton Kincaid actually leads the team in catches, but at the wide receiver position at Shakir, I think Shakir legitimately catches 75 passes this year. If he goes 75, 906, that's a wide receiver four in this setup. Absolutely. I got him in the ninth round. So again, I'm feeling really good about this, right? I got my four running backs I think are top 40. I've got my three wide receiver ones. I got another wide receiver that I think is an ideal wide receiver four in a size this a league this size. So we moved to the 10th round and I grabbed Brock Bowers. Uh, this is not, you know, we're at that zone. I'm looking at the, the tight ends. You can see the guys who went right after him. Uh, Hunter Henry, Dalton Schultz, Colton Komet, Luke Musgrave. It's like, eh. I took a shot at Brock Mowers. Now he's mayor's there with the, with the, you know, the Raiders and it's, un, it's unclear. They're, they're giving back and forth of who's even going to start a quarterback in week one and all of that. And they're, they don't want to throw the ball 40 times a week. I get that. But Brock Bowers is a tremendous talent. They kind of fell into him on draft day because all the quarterbacks they wanted to draft were you know, rostered before they were even allowed to pick on the draft. There is, you know, rookie tight ends. He's not there to block. So, you know, <laughs> there's that, right? If he's not blocking effectively, I don't know how many two tight end sets they'll, they're going to, uh, one tight end sets they're going to run with him on the field. They'll do the two tight end set with Mayer too. But Bowers, I mean, I, and again, given the context of my team, and this is why it's always important when people ask questions, Ray, what do you think about this pick? Or should I, who should I take here? What are your thoughts on this player? Context this up. Brown, Metcalf, Evans, Shakir. Again, I think all those guys, one, two, three, and four at wide receiver, slot in perfectly at what I'm trying to do. Bowers doesn't need to be a guy that catches 80 passes. He doesn't have to be Sam Laporta this year for this to work. I need Brock Bowers to catch four passes for 45 yards every week. Is that sexy or exciting? No. If he does that every week, I'm fine. Is that any different than Dalton Schultz? Is that any different than Luke Musgrave or Cole Komet? I mean, it's re- it's so I'm taking an upside shot on a rookie, hoping he just is a guy, hoping he's tight end 13. Could he be tight end eight? Could he be tight end 18? Yeah. But if he's, high, if he's tight end 13, which is basically me just keeping pace with the 14 team room, I think this works. So now I've got my four receivers, I got my four running backs, I got my quarterback, I got my tight end heading into round 11. So I've got a really nice balance here. And again, this wasn't a plan. This is just how it worked out. Four running backs, four receivers, quarterback, tight end, boom, I'm rock solid. So now I have the ability on my bench to do whatever is necessary, to whatever is needed, to go in whatever direction the board room gives me, et cetera. We are big fans of handcuffing our players at fantasyguru.com. I am a big fan of that. This draft will show you, as we continue to talk about my team, the fact that drafting your own handcuff, if you're not jumping ADP, can be very difficult because the majority of your room doesn't handcuff. And this is, I, I get it, but I don't get it. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. I get it, but I don't get it, why people don't handcuff the running backs. You can be in on handcuffing running backs or not, okay? And I understand the theory. The theory goes that why would I take a guy that's going to score four points a week unless running back my running back one gets hurt? Why? Because your running back one is likely to get hurt. And when that backup guy that's scoring four points a week becomes a starter every week, he's now scoring 15 points a week if you drafted the right running back in the right system. People, it doesn't matter unless you're in a league that counts bench points. And this one doesn't. And most don't. What difference does it make if your bench isn't scoring any points? Number one, it doesn't make any difference because they don't count. Number two, to take a page out of the Jeff Mann's book, why give yourself options every week so you make the wrong choice? This happens all the time. Ray, I've got Rico Dowdle and Blake Corum. Who do I start? You know you're going to ask that question every single week of the season. I got Jaleel McLaughlin or Braylon Allen. Who do I start? You're going to ask every single week. Every week on week. Why not just take Brees Hall and Braylon Allen, just start Brees Hall and worry about, you know, worry about starting your running back to Javante Williams or whatever he is, and just have Braylon Allen there in reserve. And don't use him at all until Brees Hall gets hurt. Especially when buys happen, especially when injuries start to pile up. I don't understand the idea, which in theory, this is the other side of the argument. This is why people don't handcuff. 
they say to themselves, well, look, why do I want a guy on my bench that's scoring four points a week? I'm going to draft because Christian McCaffrey ain't getting hurt. I'm drafting him number one overall. He's not going to get hurt. He's going to give me my 25 points a week. It's going to be great. I don't need to take his backup running back because he's not getting hurt. I'm going to take another back that when, I don't know, uh, Kyron Williams gets hurt. I'm going to take Blake Quorum. So when Kyron Williams gets hurt, I'm not going to have Christian McCaffrey and Blake Quorum on my team. Okay, I get that. And if it works out that way and you have two guys scoring 20 points a week, huge win. But now we have to plan and hope that Christian McCaffrey stays healthy. We have to plan and hope that Kyron Williams gets hurt. You got to do two things here. Versus just taking your back up, and it's one thing. So I love handcuffing. We, t- we preach it. Most of the staff preaches handcuffing. Not everyone does. And, you know, again, different setups, league sizes, scoring format, bench sizes, all these kind of things. The way your team has come together, like we're talking about here, the style that I put my team together, all these things are in play. Okay, totally fair. But in general, you want to handcuff. Ray, you didn't handcuff. I didn't handcuff because this room goes nuts. They're t- they're you're, you're ju- they're jumping ADP to take backup running backs. Uh, I don't I don't know why that is. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm gonna grab Tra- uh, Tyrone Tracy of the Giants, who at this point in time is likely to be the number two running back for the Giants. Um, you know, there's there's no role right now. It's like you know the Giants offense is very muddled. They've got Daniel Jones. It's not, you know, yay, right? But they draft the neighbors. People are obviously excited about that. If the guys stay healthy, they can have effectiveness. Devin Singletary is really the only guy ahead of, of, of Tracy, maybe Aaron Gray, depending on how it goes. And that is a little bit of a risk with my pick because Aaron, Eric Gray could be the number two. He and Tracy could battle. Okay. But Devin Singletary, he's just a guy, right? We know that. So why not take a chance on Tracy? And again, I, I don't know why, like the, the team that took Singletary, uh, and here's, you know, Digger Turnbull and the Game Night Sports team has three running backs on their roster. Didn't take the backup. They should have taken their own backup. Don't have, They have three running backs on their roster. Oh, four, excuse me. Singletary, Eckler, Dowdle, Dillon. Singletary, Eckler, Dowdle, Dillon. Uh, you can see them if you're watching on the screen there. You can see them there, game night sports. Uh, okay, they, so I grabbed him. And I'm sitting there, and then I get back to me in the 12th round, and it's like, look. And I even said this to Justin Fenster when I was doing the broadcast with on the on the on uh, during the commercial. I said, look, if Garendo is there, if Team 1, Billy Muzio, doesn't take Garendo to back up McCaffrey, I'm taking Garendo. Now, we'll see how this works out. Billy Muzio is a great fantasy player. He's a nice guy. I've talked to him before. Uh, he knows he knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. I'm not, but I don't understand why you take Jaleel McLaughlin in the 11th round and pass on Isaac Rendo. I, I, because again, Christian McCaffrey, your number one priority is keeping him healthy, right? The most important. He's the number one pick in this entire draft. Why would you not buy some insurance? I, I don't. I don't get that. So when Muzio took McLaughlin in the 11th round, I'm thinking to myself, I'm taking Isaac Rendo in the 12th round. And I did. Well, Ray, what about Elijah Mitchell? Elijah Mitchell, at this point in time, is almost certainly the number two running back for Christian McCaffrey in the Niners. Problem is, Elijah Mitchell might be the most injury-prone running back in football. I don't believe he can stay healthy. Can Christian McCaffrey stay healthy for a third year with the Niners? I don't know. So the Garendo pick is useless today. But here's what we know beyond Mitchell and beyond McCaffrey. There are systems and schemes that work running the football, and the Niners work running the football, period. Doesn't matter who the running back is. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. They are effective. Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, it does not matter. Whoever the running back is for the Niners is going to produce. Isaac Garendo is a nothing right now in the 12th round. Isaac Garendo could be a league winner. He could absolutely not. I'm not saying that. Oh, people say that all the time. He could be a league winner. If he's the starting running back in the Niners come week seven, because CMC and McCaffrey are both out and he's getting 18 touches a week. Dude's giving me 18 points a week. Got him in the 12th round. So now we're coming to the 13th round. And I, you know, I've got four receivers. It's time. I, again, I love my top four, but I got to get some depth. So I grabbed Devonta Walker. Uh, I was very interested in taking, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? He ended up going later in the draft. Let me pull him up here. 
uh, I'm, geez, Ray, the young receiver, and this is what happens for the, by the way, behind the scenes, I'm not recording this in the afternoon. I am recording this in the morning. And those of you that watch the show know that when I record in the morning, I can't think I was going to take Jermaine Burton. That was the guy, the, the youngster with the, the bangles, but I had a bye week issue. I was looking at my bye weeks and everything. And I'm like, that just doesn't really fit my team. So I went with, uh, as you can see there, in the 13th round, Devontae Walker, the youngster, the rookie that uh, is the for the works with the Ravens. Um, he is someone that Jeff Manns uh, profiled and says, if you're in a dynasty league, that's the guy. A rookie receiver with the Ravens is not necessarily ideal. Now, can Mark Andrews stay healthy? Can they open up this offense a little bit and you know have it be beside someone besides just two guys, Flowers? And Andrews can maybe, you know, Walker get involved, maybe. Is that a wasted pick? No. Is it a risky pick? Eh, you know, I think as a fifth receiver in a 14-team league, it's fine. It's a high, high variance pick. That is definitely fair. So I'm coming back to round 14, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, here's my thought process. The top three receivers in football are the best in this class. Shakir is my four. I'd love that. Walker is my five. Do I go another wide receiver, which based upon normal Ray thinking, yes. Or do I grab a running back? Because again, remember, I waited a little bit the running back spot. So am I going to go nuts with the running back? Am I going to forego that six receiver? Because again, my top three are smash, awful, excellent. My fourth, that I think, is a guy that could emerge. Still be smart to take that six receiver. But as you can see on the screen, I went with the running back, Audric Estime. Why? Because I don't know who the running back is for the Broncos. I don't know if it's McLaughlin. I don't know if it's Javante Williams. I don't know if it's Estime. I think P. Ryan's still floating around there. Like, I don't know. But what I do know is that Sean Payne's offense is going to work on the ground, and his running backs are going to produce points, period. Period. Jaloum McLaughlin is a slasher. He's a small guy. He's not an every down back. No matter what's going on, I can't envision him touching the ball 15 times a week. Javante Williams, obviously, Roy Kent, could run away with this backfield, and Audric Estime could, you know, end up this season with 62 touches. Could absolutely happen. But we're sitting here in the 14th round, and I'm thinking to myself, build running back depth. Because the way my team is constructed, A, and B, because let's not forget, this draft was done in, what, June? What day did we do this draft? I mean, we did it June 24th. June 24th. July 24th. August 24th. It's two and a half months to the start of the season. How many things can go crazy? How many of these NFL players are going to get get a DUI or get in a fight or hold out because they want money or something crazy is going to happen off the field? How many of these guys are going to get hurt on the field? They're going to tweak something in practice. They're going to tweak something in, 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 you know, when they're working out. They're going to tweak something in a preseason game. It's going to happen all over the place. So if I was drafting on September 1st and I knew exactly how everything go, you know, was going and I had a clear picture of who's going to be on the rosters in week one, I'd probably draft differently. But again, I'm drafting on June 24th. So I'm taking the running back. I can find or will be able to find a wide receiver six that can score, you know, six to 10 points a week right now. I can find that on the waiver wire. I'm pretty confident in that. Can I find a running back that's going to touch the ball 10 times a week? On, on the No. And if, if that guy is on the if on the waiver wire, what's going to happen is everyone in the league is going to try to get that guy. And there'll be a, lot, a battle here. This league, by the way, I didn't mention this. So there's no trading allowed. So it's draft and waiver. So I took Audric Estime. And again, you know, I, let me, who, let's look at the team real quickly. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. It would help if I knew how to use my computer. Let's look at the team that took Javante Williams. Uh, it's CBS Sports. Let's go. CBS Sports. There's the third team if you can read it with me. They took Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco, Javante Williams. Okay. Antonio Gibson, not a handcuff. Khalil Herbert, not a handcuff. Why are you not taking Andre Estime? Why is it Khalil Herbert? Why is it not Andre Estime there? Thank you, because I took Audrey Gessman. I really appreciate it. Um, so there, that, that's my thought process. Obviously, you know, you can see with my team here that I went with uh, the Raiders and Jake Moody. Bay Area connection late. Um, you know, honestly, a strategy with the kickers. Good team. 
good weather, late buy. Right, there's Mr. Moody, right? What's his book? Ninth, what are the Niners? Yeah, ninth round. Ninth week, excuse me, for their bye week. So that's my team. A couple of other things to comment on here. Um, I like the way the team came together. It was not a plan. It was not, this is the way it's got to be. This is the way, I'm, as it's happening, oh, I, I love this. But I got to say, I do really like the way it came together. Uh, I went, you know, heavy receiver early, got my elite quarterback, got my tr my troop of running backs, then receiver tight ended it up, then got more running backs late, got, you know, got the wide receiver. I, I like the mix here. Is this a normal Ray build? No. Look at my team. Bowers, Tracy, Garendo, Walker, Estime. I don't remember, and I've been doing this a long time. I don't remember ever doing a 16-round draft where I took five rookies. It's the nature of the beast here. Now, again, I say to all of you, that's too much youth. Yes, but here's what I would say why it's different in this scenario. Again, Bowers, yeah, Bowers in the 10th round of a 14-team league, that's a, that's a point we should all be willing to pay. Jones, Garendo, Estime are backup running back dart throw right now options. And we know if there's one position where the, the rookie can be a star rather easily compared to some of the other positions is running back. Just got to get the opportunity out there, get one injury ahead of these guys, boom, they're rocking and rolling. And three, I think that you have to note that all these guys are double digit additions, right? Everyone else above this, no one else is a rookie. I didn't take any rookies early. I didn't take neighbors. I didn't take Marvin Harrison. I didn't take, um, you know, Jonathan Brooks. These are all reserve round players. So that's the differentiator that I would draw. And hopefully you all understand that. A couple of other things um, as we pull back and kind of look at the, the draft in total. I've said this before. I'll say it again here. Uh, in a 14-team league with six bench spots, pretty deep league, to me, I don't understand at all why people are taking second quarterbacks. I don't get it. I know last year there was a ton of quarterback injuries. Maybe people are nervous about that. I would say that might have been a driving force here. But the fact is this is how people draft in this league. They always have. Um, you know, like, like CBS team here, uh, they took Jaden Daniels and Matthew Stafford. I get that. Jaden Daniels is unproven. We all love the rookie and what he could do with his legs for the commanders. And maybe it's a huge season. I'm okay taking Stafford in that, in this scenario, right? Because he's a rookie and you never know, right? We've had a lot of rookies that were supposed to do it, that didn't do it. You know, team four, the next one over Tim Jensen. Um, if you've got Brock Purdy, why are you taking Jared Goff? They're the same guy. They're legitimately the same guy. And you run into the concerns about what I said earlier. How are you going to choose each week who to play? And are you going to make the right – are you just playing Brock Purdy because you took him first? Are you just playing Brock Purdy because he's on the Niners? Are you only playing Jared Goff at home because you think he's his stats historically are better at home? Than, like, how do you – I don't like that. I think they're basically the same guy. I think they're redundant. Um, you know, the, 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 the USA Today team. With Joe Burrow and Tua Tungvaloa, you're are you are you if I'm drafting Joe Burrow, I'm never benching Joe Burrow. If I think he's going to be hurt and I think he's injury prone now because of what happened last year, I'm not drafting Joe Burrow. So if you make the I'm in Joe Burrow decision, why are you taking Tua Tungvaloa? You're never going to play him. More concerning to me is the because again the quarterback is the 20 point a week guy like that you need to have a quarterback you don't want to be starting Gardner Minshew. More concerning to me is the double tight end thing. And I just don't get this. I just, I don't, I mean, for the life of me, I don't get this. Um, yes, you can use a tight end at the flex spot. Sure. But game night sports took Travis Kelsey and TJ Hawkinson. Why? Hawkinson almost certainly is going to start the year on the pup list. So, you know, someone's going to take Hawkinson as a backup tight end. Totally get it. And I'm not, I don't have a problem in theory with it. He's probably the one guy I could say, look, if you're taking him, take a second tight end. Cause you have to, right? But why do you take me have Travis Kelsey? You're going to hold TJ Hawkins and let's say he is on the pup list and misses six weeks. You're going to hold a guy on the bench for six weeks you can't play? That's tough. You know, we see U.S. integrity there. Kittle and Hill. Well, you're never playing Taysom Hill over George Kittle, are you? Are you ever actually going to do that? Or is Hill just insurance for when Kittle gets hurt? Um, the USA Today team took David and Joku and Dalton Schultz. Again, it's a 14-team league. I think you can make an argument, a sound argument, that both are top 14 tight ends. Neither one's elite. How are we going to decide who to play? 
number one. And number two, beyond the how are we going to decide who to play, Dalton Schultz is, and I comped him to Brock Bowers early, and I'll do it again here. He's also in the articles, uh, the by the numbers pieces that were released last week at fantasyguru.com, a series of articles I do looking at each position in 2023, what numbers stood out, why, what does this mean? Well, we'll continue to analyze that moving forward. But, you know, Dalton Schultz catches 55 passes for four touchdowns every year. That's fine. For a, for a tight end, one, in a 14-team league, That'll get you a top 15 finish. Okay. It's not great. It's not sexy. And it certainly isn't moving the needle at all, but it can work. Why are you drafting that as a second tight end? Are you really going to say to yourself, boy, I'm going to get nine PPR points this week out of Dalton Schultz. I love playing that in my flex. No. And again, there are tight end premium leagues. This is not that. There are multiple flex leagues. This is not that. You only have to start one tight end. So I just, I don't understand, you know, I just, I don't get it. And I especially don't get it, you know, when you see this here at the end here, um, both the uh, fantasy alarm team for Howard Bender and the Colton Wolfman and Stern team, you know, took like Greg Dolchitz for Howard, fine. But you drafted Trey McBride in the fifth round. Like you're never going to play Greg Dolchitz. You know, the Colton Wolfman team, Friar Muth and Hunter Henry, kind of the same guy, kind of. So I, I don't think you should be taking two quarterbacks in the majority of leagues. I definitely don't think you should be taking two tight ends in the majority of leagues. So I just wanted to go through that. Not, and again, I do not, we're not going through anyone else's team. So, you know, the USA Today team, the Colton, the Wolf band, the Howard Bender, like I'm not going through those teams. I'm not, I'm not even talking about their builds. I'm just pulling back into the game night sports team. I'm just talking in general, right? Like in general, I'm not taking two tight ends using these examples. Uh, it's not fair to me to say these people had bad drafts because I didn't. I'm not breaking down their draft. I'm not looking at their draft in particular. Maybe it works, and it's you know maybe their build necessitated it. If, I would say if your build necessitated that, you need a different build. But anyway, don't take two quarterbacks and don't take two tight ends. Especially don't take two tight ends. The two quarterback thing is defensible. Like I said, you know you you got your Aiden Daniels, you got Matthew Stafford. Okay, I get it. Fine. You know, you draft Anthony Richardson, you're worried about him staying healthy. Okay, take a second quarterback. By the way, Eric Mooney of the ESPN team took Anthony Richardson, did not take a second quarterback. Be very cautious with that. So there it is. There's my team on the screen. Um, A little bit bigger detail there. So what do you think? Uh, Because obviously this is a recorded show. You can't leave your comments here, but you can leave your comments uh, over at fantasyguru.com in Discord. Uh, tag me and I'll obviously uh, respond. You can hit me up on social medias at the Ray Flowers. What do you think? Do you like this build? I heard it from a couple of people saying they love this. This is what I, I had a caller on the show last week say, Ray, I did this last year, last two years, and it kind of worked for me. I won championships. So I like this build. I've had people in Discord say, Ray, I like this. And this is also Jeff Manns talked about this on his Elite Sports Show, which is Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Series XM. Jeff talked about this exact style of building. He said, look, depending upon your league and how people draft, where you're at, in the, you know, it's different if you're pick number two versus pick 11, all these kind of things. But he described on the radio a scenario very similar to this, where he went through a team that was heavily right wide receiver and quarterback at the start just like this, that weighted running back just like this, and ended up with a group very similar to this, like in the top eight rounds. And he even mentioned this when he returned from his mini vacation saying, I you know, saw Ray's team and he ended up with Zach Moss and Najee Harris and Jerome Ford. And I love it. So this is a path. And remember, this is not a zero running back path. None of us are saying not to draft running backs. I went through it. I was going to take a running back in the first round. So, you know, this is not wait to the fifth round to take your running back or you're doing it wrong. No, 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 no. But this is proof that if you are going to do that, it can work. Now, at the end of the day, you have to know your level of competition, not your level of competition. You have to know your competitors. Who else is in the league with you? If you're in a league where five quarterbacks are going in the third round, well, you could probably wait a little bit on running backs, right? If you're in a league where no one takes a quarterback in the first four rounds, if you're in a league that drafts similar to this one did, where a lot of people went heavy running back early and then heavy wide receiver, how does that affect things? So, any kind of intel you could ever get from your league mates, uh, from past drafts they've done or talking to them before the draft. Hey, what are you thinking of? Have a beer with them. You know, hey, yeah, yeah. any information you can get is helpful. 
Uh, and remember, as we discussed, that ADP is great. It's useful. But at the end of the day, every draft is different. There's no set scenario. We get the question all the time. Who do I take in the first round, Ray? Who do I take in the second round? I took this guy in the first round. I'm thinking about taking this guy in the second round. Drafts go in weird ways. I, I would have never thought five running backs would have gone in the first 10 picks here. But there it is. So be ready to bob. Be ready to weave. Uh, and give us an opportunity over at fantasyguru.com to help you out. Click that subscribe tab in the top right corner of the page. Uh, we will do whatever we can to help you have success in fantasy football this year. We have rankings for everything. We've got Discord for everything. The package you get now, remember, is all season long. It's not a preseason draft guide. It's all season long. You get everything. Everything you see on the screen there and way more. So click the subscribe tab in the top right corner. Uh, the Elite Sports Show with Jeff Manns is Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Series 6 and Fantasy Sports Radio. He'll be talking about football every single day. The Fantasy Sports Daily Show that you're watching right now, that show has been moved back an hour, as you've hopefully recognized, because if you haven't, by Friday here, uh, you've missed out on the last couple of shows live. We moved the show back an hour. It'll be on 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Now that's going to be the new time spot. We're just going to rock and roll with that moving forward. We're, we will, uh, starting next week, go back to our normal schedule of Armando Marsal Wednesdays, uh, Tyler Beaker Thursdays, and Russell Clay Fridays. All of them joining around 1230 Eastern uh, on those three days to talk football for the second half of the show. Uh, but Monday, Tuesday, all baseball. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, half at least half baseball. So we're, don't worry, we're not abandoning baseball by any means uh, here on the show. And we won't be doing that either at FantasyGuru.com. So thanks for watching. Really. I just knocked myself out. Hey, Ray, put yourself on the screen. Hey, there we go. These buttons are really difficult. <laughs> I'm wearing my Niner shirt. For those of you that know, this thing is not new. It's got the old colors on it. It's kind of warm, a little hot right now. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. Pick up the package at fantasyguru.com. Send those questions in the comments in, in the Discord. We'll be happy to help you out. Um, I've got the four by the numbers articles out right now. I will be, uh, well, I'm currently working on my article about auctions, uh, my running back PPR myth. I know that there's a series of podcasts that will probably accompany the draft guide as they do every year. I'll, I'm sure I'll be, I haven't seen the list yet, but I'm sure I'll be involved in that too. So uh, there's a lot coming down and I will be involved in baseball, hundred percent in football, 50% until the season starts. And I'm hundred percent there too, uh, doing both. So feel free to ask me questions on both over at fantasyguru.com. Thanks for listening today. Uh, we'll be back in on Monday again, 12 PM Eastern standard time right here on fantasy sports daily powered by fantasyguru.com.